Hi there, I'm Nigel Griffiths. In this HMC Enhanced Plus Graphical User Interface Live Demo, we've reached part nine. This is templates for creating servers and templates for creating virtual machines in a very simple way. Now we find uh, templates are not in here, uh, they're down here. Okay, HMC and stuff, we've got the templates and OS image. Right, now this is a system template, not to be confused with a, a partition template. So it's system template in here. Now if uh, you're the sort of organization that buys lots of similar servers, um, then this will be really good for you. Now my manager tends to be one of each sort of machine, so I've got an example of them to play with and, and, and try experiments on and give demos on. Um, if, if you're the sort of company that buys uh, maybe 20 uh, S822s to run a whole farm of them or pretty much the same, then a system template is exactly what you want to do. Um, if, I, if I was given 20 machines, I think, oh, it's quite a lot of work, isn't it? Setting up the machine and installing the two vers VIO servers and, and getting them up and running, then I can start doing useful things. Well, the system template is there to do that for you. So the idea is that you have a bunch of templates, and these are two that are given for us uh, immediately. Um, I have, for example, these very small Power 6 machines that only support one VO server. So I created a version that's just got one VO server. And if we, we look at one of these and the action, we can, once we set one up, we can do a deploy pointed at a brand new machine and it will set it up for us and including you could then get the VIO servers installed um, we can export this uh, configuration and then Im import it with this button up in here to another v HMC so we don't have to reinvent the wheel and um, we can view uh, edit uh, copy to make a, a copy of these two and then edit it how I've got these ones with uh, my name in if it, but if we just look took at the edit operation we can see what's actually inside of one of these this is for setting up a whole machine right so you've got a name give it some description um, maybe you'd want to keep the size of the VO server in, in, this, in this little description uh, the details are actually uh, down in here so we look at the the physical um, IO inside this box so we can actually assign where that goes and uh, what's available We've got the hardware virtualization for the SRIV or the old Power 7 HEA, which is a similar sort of technology actually. Um, then we got uh, the VIO servers and what we want to do with with those, uh, how big they are and how much memory they're going to have. If we click on one of those, we can go in and edit the details of the VIO server. I won't, won't do that for time. Then we can describe the uh, networks in here and um, define what those are like. We can select uh, one particular one and then uh, modify the you know, VLAN switch or whatever it is you want to edit. You know, production network VLAN, you know, select one of those and uh, modify that, uh, the virtual name and, and things. Right, uh, just moving on quickly. I got the virtual storage. How you actually want to do that? Um, it's going to say choose a deploy time. So if we want to do shared storage pools, it'll have to go and find those um, while we're doing the deploy. If then we're going to use the shared processor pools in here, shared uh, memory pools if you're using those and we've got some advanced settings and I forget what they were okay LMB size might be important that's got to be right if you're doing live partition mobility it has to be the same on the source and the target for example alright so let's, let's just cancel out of that we then if we wanted to do this operation we'd uh, we can select this one and we'd do a deploy operation so it's telling you what it's going to do we're going to plod through all these things across in here there's a cut couple more in here have to set these up doing the sort of final thing for the actual machine and then it will build that machine for us making some VO servers and setting up what we want now we're going to st stop there if that's what you want then you go in there and you'll know more than me um, because I don't get much time to practice all my machines are used uh, most of the time I, I could destroy one of my power six machines and and rebuild it using a, a system template in fact i could uh, actually capture the current config and build a template from it and then see if i could rebuild it using a system template what i do much more often is these uh, partition templates in here again we've got an import to select one we've got the actions in here these ones are the 
default ones are given examples in here and they have some things edited out in here you can't edit these but if you want to take one of these uh, this is what for IBM I then you could do a copy you, you have to give it a new name and then you can edit your copy and that's what I've done down here for a couple of them in here so I've got a uh, simple one for with uh, one VO server attached uh, one I used uh, earlier on and probably got all sorts of bizarre settings in here this is the description in here so let's just go in, in one of the, look at this one in here action uh, edit these are a lot more simple because it's just one partition we're talking about now so in the general properties then uh, we have uh, what sort it's going to be it's uh, IBM I AX Linux and whether we want these features on um, bit of a shame if you want to uh, actually do an install from a virtual DVD you can't have simplified remote restart on it or refuse to let you join a piece of hardware to it processors we've seen this similar thing sort of before and we to processes that's fine uh, memory well you can't run AIX in that sort of memory turn it to gigabytes let's give it to and uh, it says well no that's not right that one's smaller than that one oops we put four in here and um, then it says okay that's okay um, physical adapters well we probably want to go virtual so the answer would be uh, none okay ne networking uh, similar thing we're going to do a choose during deployment because it will actually when you deploy it to a machine it will actually ask the virtual IO servers what virtual networks have you got and then you can choose same thing with virtual NICs and uh, virtual storage in here we could add a shared storage pool volume for example and how much we want, how large it wants to be, and things like that. We've got some more fields over here: a virtual fiber channel and a virtual optical, virtual DVD. Now I'm going to quit out of that because I have one that will work quite happily on my tiny little, little um, Power Six machines. So this is one I call fixed. <laughs> uh, I've tested this a couple of times. We can do an action and a deploy in here. You'll see some features that may not be obvious um, if you're doing this the first time. Uh, sorry, you can't click along here, you have to do the next. Okay, so it says, where do you want to deploy that? Now, I have been deploying things to uh, the bronze machine in here, my Power 6, but that's getting full up. So let's try putting it on the gold machine that's got plenty of resources. And this is a case where we're having to decide to where we want to put this LPAR, where if we're using power VC it will look around this list and say oh Lime's got 18 CPUs that will put it on there but um, this is for my example in here of a small one going onto a small machine so that's the machine it's going to go onto when we click next it's going to interrogate that machine and its virtual IO server to actually fill in some of the blanks as we go on here we can see the, uh, the orange and the red yes I'm busy and I know I'm busy and uh, please wait for me take a little time I haven't cut anything actually out of this video of you know uh, making things go quicker than they really are. Now I put in when when it's something that I you have to type in while you're doing the deploy. I put change this. It's a reminder of me like I've got to put something in here. So uh, for these little temporary ones, I've been putting in uh, Joti four as I give them demos for uh, Joti, and it says okay, that's okay. On to the next. That wasn't hard, was it? We need a a name for our new LPAR. Uh, in here we got physical adapters uh, which are going to be, well there are some in that machine but we're not going to, we're going to go virtual so we'll move on. Here's the network configuration. So on this machine there are actually two networks. Here's my 62 which is my standard one so I'll select that one and move that on. Here's our storage side, virtual SCSI. It's going to ask for the details okay it says physical there's nothing in uh, assigned to it at the moment I could um, uh, you know, go and add a, uh, a disk to it uh, hardwire that in a physical disk here's my shared storage pool and here's change this again so you need to give that LU the virtual disk and name and we always relate it to the, the name of the partition so what was that Joti4 uh, V disk 1 okay um, fiber channel we haven't got any virtual optical device drive we want to boot off the uh, disk 
from the VO server. So again, we've got to change this and uh, we'll call it Duty uh, 4 uh, DVD 1. That's probably only ever going to be one, but that will do fine. We've got to the summary, and there we are. So we've typed in Jyoti 4 four times, and uh, that's it. What well, we have to do give it some names for things it wants to do. Now, I just noticed on that summary there was a typo, uh, but now it's going to actually deploy this. It's going to create the LPAR, uh, or choose the template, create the LPAR, configure the virtual Ethernet adapters, putting in the virtual slot numbers that will uh, work. So I'm not going to get that wrong manually. Next up, it will do the uh, storage, and then we'll have a LPAR ready to go. I think at the end of the summary, there was two options about whether you just create it or do want to actually automatically activate it as soon as it is ready. So here, here is actually done. Uh, this will catch up in a second on the screen, and we're ready to go. We can go and find JT4 and power it up. Okay, close. Um, if we go over to here, uh, partitions. Oh, uh, there it is there, actually. In fact, I didn't have to go searching for it. So I could click on here, create a console via the VT menu, and uh, activate it. By default, it's a brand new LPAR. It will boot off the DVD, is uh, the first option anyway. And I could start the install. Okay, now there was something else on there that I, I skipped past, wasn't it? It was in here. OS template. Yeah, the final one in here, this is where we can use the HMC to do installs and things. I'll give you an example of managing the virtual IO server image repository. Yeah, in here I've actually uploaded one for the 225 VIO server. Um, and uh, I can import them in here and it'll ask me uh, where do I actually go and get that and drag it over the uh, the network in whatever fashion you actually want but we won't do that today and if we started a VO server up rather than activate it we move over to the second option and we do uh, an install operation and it will do a NIM install of our VO server for us Okay, that's the end of templates and OS images. In the final part, we'll be looking at the performance dashboard and finishing off.